if you are just signing in, um, I am Lindsay. I'm the Associate Director of the Every Life Foundation for Rare Diseases. We are going to spend the next hour talking about one of my favorite programs, the Rare Artist Program. Um, so yes, yeah, sit back, grab yourself a cup of tea, grab a cup a coffee. We're going to talk about art for the next hour. Okay, so I'm gonna officially get started. <laughs> welcome, welcome everyone. I am so excited uh, to lead this webinar. This is the first time we have ever done a rare artist webinar, so it's very exciting. Um, I, I welcome all of you. Um, I am Lindsay, for you uh, that are just joining us. I am the Associate Director of Patient Engagement at the Every Life Foundation for Rare Diseases. And Rare Artist is one of the programs that we do at the foundation. A couple of quick notes on general housekeeping. If you're having any sort of connectivity issues while uh, you are watching this webinar, there's a couple of things you can try. Uh, you could try logging in and out. So log out of the webinar and just log back in and please join us. Uh, back again. You could try turning off all of your other streaming devices. So if you have Spotify being played right now, if you have Netflix, if you have Hulu, please take a moment really fast and turn off those um, streaming on your computer. You could also try plugging directly into the Ethernet cord. Uh, if you even know where that is, I don't, but if you do, you could try doing that to have some better connectivity. Um, and you can also always minimize your screen. If you're seeing this on your whole entire computer right now, I don't know, sometimes it takes less bandwidth if you minimize it. Um, also, if you have questions during this entire webinar, uh, you can utilize the chat feature. You can also utilize the Q&A feature. You'll probably see buttons of icons down at the bottom of your screen. Feel free as those questions come up, you can go ahead and uh, uh, ask questions. Um, my lovely coworker Brenda is on during the duration of this webinar with us. If she can answer something right away, she's going to answer them, uh, but the majority of them, uh, or if there's some that would apply to everyone, uh, we're going to save those for the end. So we will have some time at the end for some Q&A, so please stick around for that. Okay, once again, welcome. And... Before we get started with the general programming, I do just want to take a quick second to shout out our wonderful 2020 Rare Artist Sponsors. Without the support of these sponsors and our industry friends, there is no way that these wonderful programs like the Rare Artist Program could exist. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We love our sponsors. On today's agenda, um, I realize that a lot of you joining us today have probably never heard or know anything about the Rare Artist Program, so we're going to go have a quick overview of what the contest and the program is all about, uh, talk a little bit more about the specifics about how the contest works, go over some submission requirements um, that you need to do in order to enter into the contest, and I'm hoping, <laughs> cross your fingers, for a successful live demo um, where I'm going to show you how to pop on to Facebook and do your submission and also what uh, the voting process is like. So bear with me at that. Again, first time doing it. So <laughs> wish, wish us luck. Um, and then after that, I'm so excited. Today we have a guest speaker, Mariah Fisher, joining us. She is one of the 2019 awardees in the teen category, and she's gonna talk a little bit about her award-winning piece, Hope Blossoming, as well as what her experience was like on Capitol Hill during Rare Disease Week and at the Rare Artist Reception. And also, Mariah has a feature in a local newspaper, so she's gonna give us some tips on how she was actually able to achieve that, which is amazing. And then at the end, uh, we are again hoping for some time for some q and I know you guys have a lot of questions, so we'll get to those. A little bit more about the Rare Artist. Uh, 
program. So this program was established in 2010. I cannot believe it. It's about as old as the Every Life Foundation for Rare Diseases, which again is the umbrella program that houses rare artists among many other programs that you probably hear about in the rare disease community. Rare Disease Legislative Advocates, or RDLA, which is part of the Every Life Foundation. Rare Artists, part of the Every Life Foundation. YAR, part of the Every Life Foundation. All of these are housed under Every Life, which at the heart of it is a 501c3 patient organization that focuses on public policy. We uh, help train advocates and provide advocacy tools on how to advocate for yourself and um, bringing the most uh, treatment legislative options that we can possibly find to you and your community. Uh, back to our artists. Over the past 10 years, I'm pleased to report that we've hosted over 11 different rare artist contests, which is hard to even believe. Um, and we've showcased each and every year at Capitol Hill during Rare Disease Week. We've displayed rare art throughout a variety of different patient conferences and meetings, um, including Ultradenix Patient Day, Rare Fair, Global Gene Summit, and World Symposium. So we're all over the place. We've also celebrated the talents of over hundreds of rare disease patients and caregivers through our online gallery and our public voting category, which is on Facebook. Really at the heart of the Rare Artist Program, our mission is to spread rare disease awareness. Um, and it's also to foster artists into advocates. And anyone who is touched by rare is absolutely encouraged to join the movement. So come one, come all. The 2020 Rare Arts Contest is currently open for submissions. This is our 12th contest. We will remain open for submissions on Facebook from now through October 1st. So you've got plenty of time to enter your art. I'll talk more a little bit about the contest. So. How do I submit? How do I submit my, when it comes down to it, how do I actually submit onto Facebook? We get this question all the time. So first things first, you want to go to our Rare Artist Facebook page, which you can find at facebook.com backslash Rare Artist Contest. Once you get to that page, on your left-hand side, you're going to see some columns and some tabs. You're going to want to click on Rare Artist Contest 2020. And on that landing page, and again, we'll have a live demo, so I'll show you actually these things in reality here in a minute. But once you get to that landing page, uh, there'll be some information. You just scroll down to the bottom and you're gonna three, see these three buckets divided by age. That is where you're going to want to enter. You just click on whatever age of the artist is you're trying to submit the artwork for. So if you're submitting on behalf of someone, make sure you're submitting on the age of the artist, not yourself. Very important. Click on those uh, age buckets and then there should be a form that encourages you to enter and you fill out some things and you browse for your image and you upload it. Um, additionally, off to that left-hand side, you can just go directly to those links too as well, either or. And um, again, those submissions are open until October 1st, 2020 on Facebook. And the voting for that portion of the contest will remain open another month. So after the submissions close, you have a whole nother month to vote for your friends and family and also promote your own work. Hmm. What do you do if you don't have a Facebook page? What do I do? What do I do if I don't have a Facebook page? It's totally fine. We absolutely accept submissions through email. All you have to do is email me directly. My email is lcundiff at everylifefoundation.org. And please just note that when you are submitting via email, that means you are not submitting on the public Facebook vote. So you will not see your images on Facebook because you're submitting via email. 
Uh, so we uh, absolutely, there's nothing wrong with submitting via email. You're still eligible for many of the other voting categories like the Voters Circle, the Sue Colton Merit Award, and our Special Merit. Just know that when you send me submissions, I cannot upload your images myself. You have to do it under Facebook account. So keep that in mind. Okay, some basic submission requirements. <laughs> Whether you're submitting on Facebook or through email, it's all the same. It's the same criteria. We ask for first and last name. We ask for email. We ask for phone number. Some people ask me, why, why do you need my phone number? We do that in the case that you're an awardee. It's just so we can get a hold of you. <laughs> it's happened before where we only have an email and maybe you submitted your through a work email that's no longer in existence or you don't check your email or it goes to junk, I don't know. We just want to reassure that we can get a hold of the people who are awardees. I'm sure you want the same thing. So please provide us with your phone number. Um, title of artwork, absolutely. It's a completely acceptable title to have untitled, but just make sure that you tell me that that's the title of your artwork. That. artist statement um, that is the area for you to tell us about your artwork or about your process or about your rare disease it's really up to you it's just a 500 character maximum so kind of brief but enough room for you to tell your story and your art assigned digital re release form um, we always ask for that and we always ask for your rare disease affiliation and we always ask for a photo submission that's 2MG or a higher resolution. I'll talk more a little bit about why we ask for that in a minute. Um, please note, each individual that's submitting into the contest, you get up to two submissions each, not two per category, <laughs> two submissions total for each individual. So keep that in mind. Um, what are the prizes? Excellent question. <laughs> so um, the surprise, the prizes are um, dependent on the age group. So it's a hundred for ch the children category, it's two fifty for teen, and it's five hundred for adult. In addition to those checks that you would receive if you're an awardee, we also have a travel stipend offering that we offer to folks in order to help to get you to Washington D.C. for Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill and the Rare Artist Reception. Okay, and I included in this some like basic questions that we always get every single year. So I'm hoping this will provide some uh, clarity. So we always, always get, can I, what kind of mediums can I enter into this art contest? It looks like it's only photography. It looks like it's only paintings, but I have a beautiful ceramics piece. Can I still enter into the contest? The answer is yes. Yes, you absolutely can. You can submit whatever medium it is that you work with. If it's ceramics, if it's painting, if it's photography, you can choose whatever you want. You just have to be able to submit a photo of it. I hope that makes sense. For an example, this right here, this art piece that you see right here by the lovely Stanley Rill, I think he was an already from two years ago maybe, this actually is a wood carving. This beautiful owl you see before you is a wood carving that he put in a black background and took a picture of it. So that's how he was able to submit his wood carving into the contest. He didn't send me the red wood carving, he just took a photo of it. Um, and I'm gonna explain why that is here in just a minute. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to accept any submissions for audio and video, because again, we make a, a poster image of these award pieces. I Maybe sometime in the future, I don't know. I'm open to suggestions, but uh, we just don't have the capability at this time, but maybe in the future. So here's an example. Um, these are some of the photos from last year or this year's um, Rare Artist Reception. So you can see we blow up the images. Oh, I don't know. These posters are maybe like three by four feet. Um, so that's why we want the 2MB or higher resolution because if we blow up something that's got a lower resolution, it'll look right. 
Um, the pictures are pixelated. It doesn't come across. Your art's not represented the way it's supposed to look. Like we want your art to look the best it possibly can and for you and your story to be represented in the best light. Uh, that's why we ask from the get go that uh, the images are a certain resolution. Another question that I get all the time is, is this contest open internationally? Yes, yes it is. We welcome our international advocates to enter into the contest. Um, we love that this program is open internationally. You are still eligible for the cash check prizes. However, the caveat to that is, in order to receive the rare disease uh, travel stipend to Washington DC, you need a US residential address because we want you to come to Rare Disease Week to advocate for, with your state legislator um, for rare disease legislation happening in the US. So for those of you who have not been to Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill, here's a picture from our last year here, or sorry, this year. Um, it takes place at the end of February, actually I think for 2021 will be at the very start of March, and I have those dates later. Um, this is brought to you by Rare Disease Legislative Advocates. If you want to hear more about that whole week, which is a whole series of events for the community, please visit rareadvocates.org. And uh, rare, the, uh, rare Artist Reception is just one of the events that takes place through the entire week. So lots of fun activity. It's very meaningful. If you've never heard about it, I encourage you to go and check it out. Um, each year we grow. We want to just keep fostering more and more artists to advocates, uh, training more advocates, and bringing more of you to Washington, D.C. so we can storm the Capitol and fight for our rights. Um, here's a great example. Uh, last year we have awardee in the children's category. This is Gracie. She is seen here with one of her, this photo in the middle, um, which she brought to Senator Romney during her, their congressional meetings. And she talked oh, to him about how she was a rare artist awardee. I mean, what a great personal touch to add to your Capitol Hill meeting and to really cinch in that personal touch for um, the advocacy that you're doing. So that's a great example. And we, of course, love that at the Real Life Foundation. Another question I get a lot is I won last year, I've already won this contest, but can I enter again? I'd love, I've got my art pieces, I'd love to, to enter again. Uh, the answer is yes, yes, you absolutely can. However, <laughs> for all awardees, you cannot win two years in a row. Um, and that's just to open that up more to uh, people, other people in the community uh, who can, um, we hope to also, provide the experience of Washington DC and speaking at the rare artist reception and all that stuff. So, um, but it's just two years in a row. You could win again, I guess. <laughs> if you're interested in more of the rules and the guidelines, please visit rareartist.org backslash contest rules guidelines. Some tips, and this again is just after doing this for so many years, we see kind of a trend in one of the, in the pieces that are awarded. So I'm gonna give you some hot tips to hopefully help you win. <laughs> um, first being to please take your time in uh, taking a, pic a nice picture of your artwork. So by that I mean it's well framed, there's nothing in the background. If you can see from the displays that I showed you earlier, it's just the image. It's not the full photo, right, that we have on the, on the poster boards. We just want the art. So take the time to frame it with just the art. Um, also take the time to make sure it's a high-res photograph and that it's well lit and all that kind of stuff. Um, second hot tip is to utilize your community. If you're posting on Facebook, by all means, share, vote, share, 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 vote, vote, vote. You can vote for any piece once every 10 days. And it also has an, a, a link that you're able to just post on your Facebook and you can encourage people, your friends and families, your caregivers, your doctors, your school, your whoever to, to vote for you. That's the beauty of the Facebook public vote. It absolutely kills me when I'm looking on the admin dashboard and I see some of the pieces that are submitted that have zero votes. 
That means you didn't even vote for yourself. And I think that's just because people, people don't know that's an option. So that's part of the reason we're holding this webinar today. So if you want to know how to vote, let me know. And also we're gonna try to do that in the live demo here in a minute. Um, my third hot tip is to take the time to write a compelling artist statement. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, write something personal, write something meaningful, write something brief. Those seem to be the winners. All right. So a little bit more on that. This is a visual example of what I was talking about when I said to frame your artwork in the, in the photograph. So over here on your left, by the way, this is my brilliant piece of art, <laughs> spine art that I have in my house that I use as an example. <laughs> on the left side here, um, we have in the background, you know, my pillowcases, my sunglasses, the coaster I use, and why I'm sure everyone is just fascinated by that. That's not ideally what we want you to submit. We want more of what you see on the right, just the image itself, nothing in the background. It's well lit, even though I can see right now mine's got a little shadow. Do over, right? <laughs> so um, anyway, you get the point, framing matters, so take the time to do that. Another great example, this is a um, awardee from last year, Alex Biaggi, for his award-winning piece for the uh, Sue Colton Merit Award called Arrow. Um, I'm just gonna read really fast his artist statement because I think it, it kind of hits on every key point. It says, I have a rare autoimmune neuromuscular disease called CIDP, which stands for chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, and that affects his peripheral nervous system. My left hand is completely paralyzed, and I have limited motion in my right hand. I have enough strength in my right hand to use a computer mouse, and I use voice to text to talk. I cannot hold a piece of pencil, a, a pencil or a paintbrush, so I paint with my mouth. It also affects my legs and ankles. I have drop foot on both feet and I have to wear braces to walk. The odds of getting CIDP is one in 100,000. It's similar to MS, ALS, and is, and is the chronic version of GBS. I've had this disease for 15 years, but I only started painting this way since 2015. Thank you, Alex. So what I like about this artist statement is one, it's personable. Two, he describes his rare disease. He names it, he claims it. He also talks about what his day-to-day -day is a little bit. He talks about his art process and how that's relevant to this piece of art. And he even throws in a little rare disease fact, which we love. Anyway, it's a great example. It's short, it's brief, it's to the point, and it's meaningful. Thank you, Alex. So <laughs> since we are uh, submitting this specifically for the Facebook submissions, uh, just so you all know, the, there's a third company, th outside company that we hire to host the contest through Facebook and that's called Hayo. So actually when you're submitting into the contest, there's a couple of things going on. There's many moving parts. So when there's an issue, uh, I have to contact Heyo in order to get the issue resolved. Um, so, and, um, yeah, so <laughs> keep that in mind when you're emailing me that it may take up to a couple of days for us to fix, but um, we'll absolutely get it fixed. That being said, there are some common issues. There's some trends that I've showed, so we're just gonna go over them really quickly right now. One is I log into Facebook, I go to submit into um, my account and I'm already there and it asks me to log into Facebook. Why? I don't get it. I don't know um, truth be told, I don't get it either. I don't understand this error at all. It makes no sense to me. You're already logged into face it, Facebook. Why is it asking you again? Just click the button that says log into Facebook. Try it again. Sometimes it works magic. I don't know why. It's a mystery. Um, but. Uh, it, 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 nine times out of 10, that works. Um, another issue that sometimes comes up is your, you submit your artwork and a submission needs edits. You notice that it's on there, it says your name, but it's blank. Or maybe the image is rotated and it's turned sideways. 
Um, maybe it's the wrong the name. It's not the artist's name, it's your own name. What's all that about? So unfortunately, when you after you submit, you actually don't have any more control. That's it. That's all she wrote. Your piece is up there. If you want to edit your piece, you need to email me. And once again, that's L Cundiff at everylifefoundation.org. Give me a couple days and I'll try to fix it as soon as I possibly can. Um, and Heyo's customer service is actually usually pretty good about that. So um, bear with us, but we always try to get it fixed for you. Uh, another question I get a lot is, all I see is a place to vote. I can't really tell where to submit. What's going on? So there's actually two pages that toggle on the submission page. One is for enter and one is to vote. And I hope to show you that here in a minute in that live demo. But if you are entering into the contest, make sure you're under the enter window. It's a button that's at your top right on those submission pages. And then when it's time to vote, make sure you're clicked on the vote button. Um, I know sometimes it's really easy to, to miss, but I'm hoping hopefully this live demo will go okay and I'll, I'll, we'll be able to, to show you that. So <gasps> that being said, live demo. All right. I'm going to pop out of this and pop into um, the internet. So uh, bear with me. Okay, I'm hoping you can all see my Facebook right now. Um, and I uh, I just set up a quick new account. So um, this isn't my real Facebook, if anybody was worried. Anyway, okay, here we are. So first thing you wanna do is go to www.facebook.com backslash rare artist contest. That's gonna bring you to this home page that you see right now. Once you're in the home page, uh, by all means, feel free to scroll around and see what our marketing team's um, been working hard on posting, all these wonderful information pieces about the contest and the program. Once you've done looking through that and finding out some more information over on this left-hand side, like I was talking about earlier, you want to click on Rare Artist Contest 2020. Here is what I call the landing page, if you heard me refer to that earlier. From here, scroll down. There's some information about the contest. By all means, read it. There's click-throughs to um, more information on our website, which is rareartist.org, like our contest rules and guidelines, or if you want to really read and dig, dive into the digital work release, digital release form. But if you're ready to enter, you just click on your age appropriate group right here. Um, or you can go directly to those pages also seen on your left, up to you. So let's say I'm a child and I want to click or enter into the children's category. I'm just gonna click right here. chugging along. <laughs> okay, here we are. Good. Yay, we made it. Hopefully you can all see this. So see, this is the enter and the voting toggling buttons I was talking about. Make sure you're on enter. Number one, number one step, make sure you're on enter. You can see the uh, countdown here, right? Oh my God, I've only got 93 more days to enter. Okay, so plenty of time. So you should be looking at a form like this. I am now uh, ready to upload my award-winning piece. So I'm going to browse. Here we go, Ooh, very exciting. Um, I also encourage you to do this from your desktop, or at the desktop computer rather than a phone. It just seems to work better, I feel like it's easier. So if you're having any issues, I'd recommend doing that. Um, and having your image directly on your desktop before you get to this process, just so it's super easy for you to find. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on my award-winning piece that is currently uploading. <laughs> okay, so I see how I can see the link in there. That means it's probably uploaded. Um, 
by default, you will have to fill out all of this information. Um, I don't think you'll be able to enter. I think this is all mandatory. So take the time to, to thoughtfully fill it all out. Again, this is just a test that I'm going to delete later. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. But image description is your rare artist statement. You have 500 characters to describe whatever it is you want to make a statement about this image for. Um, please like, I, or, I don't know, don't write that, but that's just a, a filler. Title of art, um, I posted, like, you'll see a picture of my daughter in a sec, so I'm gonna call this Olive, that's her name. Um, if I were, since I'm in the children's category, ideally uh, this artist would be a child. So I kind of cheated already. I'm messing this up, but um, child's name, you know, whatever. Let's say, let's say Olive took that photo. Great. Age of child, um, we'll say four, even though she's actually six months. And your email, right? Put in your email, um, put in your phone number. Oh, it's not going to let me. There's my email if anyone needs it. Phone number, your phone number. Rare disease affiliation, mine is myasthenia gravis. And then you click on, um, I have read and agreed to the official rules and digital release form. And again, I encourage you to just take the time and read those. And then you enter. All right, so you will get um, if you've su successfully submitted, you will get a pop-up that says, thank you for entering. Right here in this little link is your official artwork link. When I talk about sharing your art, when I talk about giving it to your community and having, providing a link, even if you're, having issue, if you're having technical issues and you need to contact me, give me this link. It saves me from scrolling through all of the 400 whatever submissions that we get in order to find yours. So this link is is where it's at. Um, right after, if you're ready to, to share in your community right away, you can just click on any of these things and it will post an image and give people, I believe it prompts people to vote, which is great. Um, okay, I'm gonna click out of that. And as you can see, whoa, here it is. If I were to vote for this, I just click right here, bing, on this little check mark. And again, I'm going to get a window that pops up that says, thank you for voting. You just voted. Keep voting. Great. And you are allowed to vote for each piece once every 10 days. Um, okay. If I were just coming onto the site or you weren't able to provide people that link for whatever reason and you were trying to tell people just to go to where artists and vote or if you wanted to vote for some other submissions other than yourself, click on that voting tab and just go ahead and click on whatever you'd like. Okay, I think that's it for the live demo I wanted to show. If I'm forgetting anything, I'm sure people will remind me. Um, okay, I'm gonna just pop back into our lovely PowerPoint and get to the place where we were before. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, we're back in action. Okay, so um, before I turn this over to Mariah, um, a couple of important deadlines I just want everybody to be aware of. So June 16th is when we opened the contest. Once again, it is currently open. It will remain open for submissions until October 1st, 2020. We will then close the Facebook um, submissions, but voting will remain open. So those images will remain up. There'll be a new clock on the voting page that says 30 more days to vote. Please, please, please share your um, uh, piece with your community and, and get them involved and continue to spread rare disease awareness for that amount of time. By December 11th, we will privately notify those who have been awarded um including the public vote we on purpose leave the voting counts private um just because we've had issues with cheating in the past um so we announce all of the or sorry notify all the awardees at the same time and that will happen around december 11th um 
and that's in order to give y'all um, time to make your travel arrangements if you are able to come to Washington, D.C. Um, for Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill. Uh, come January 15th is when we will publicly announce the awards. Um, so we'll, we'll get, e you'll get emails, you'll see on social, you start to see social posts and you get to see the whole community gets to see all the award winning pieces. So that's very exciting. Um, and then the dates for our next Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill is March 1st through the 4th, 2021. As far as we know, as far as every life knows, we are still planning a physical event. I know things are a roller coaster right now. Um, if we change to virtual, you'll absolutely get that communication. Um, I don't know what exactly that looks like, but so far we're still planning. We still have the deposits on the Reagan Center. <laughs> so we're still planning on having that event um, physically, but you know, we'll see. Um, and this last slide is just an, you know, again, a reminder. Uh, I hope that you all can attend the Rare Earths Reception uh, that will take place during Rare Disease Week, uh, those first few days in March. If you want to learn more, it's rareadvocates.org for any information about Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill. That being said, I'm going to turn it over to Mariah. Let's see if she can pop in on video. Oh. There she is. Hi, Mariah. Hi. Yay. Yay, I'm so glad that worked. So I'm so excited, y'all. This is Mariah Fisher. Once again, she is one of the awardees from the 2019 Rare Artist Contest. She represented this contest so well. She's in the teen category. She was able to come to Rare Artist Reception on Capitol Hill and also got a feature in her local newspaper, which she's going to talk a little bit about. Take it away, okay. Next slide. Okay, what is my connection to rare disease? First of all, I have one. It's called arterial venous malformation. Um, it's basically a tangle of veins and arteries that can bleed at a higher rate than normal ones. And it led to a massive hemorrhage stroke. Hemorrhage just means blood from a ruptured blood vessel. Um, it, left, he, um, it left me with aphasia, low energy, central pain syndrome, partial paralysis, a movement disorder, and intensified OCD. Next slide. What inspired me to draw hope blossoming? So I love art. Um, but I thought I couldn't draw again because my um, it was paralyzed. My right arm was paralyzed. But many of my old school friends ended up not being helpful with my new challenges. I, um, I saw a painting done by one of them. And then I thought I can draw something better than her. So I drew this rose. <laughs> Next slide. What was my experience at the Rare Artist Reception? What was it like to have my art displayed at Capitol Hill? I felt understood. I met some very nice people. It was very easy to talk with others about others' challenges. I loved hearing um, others' speeches and learning about other types of rare diseases. Next slide. How I got a feature in my local newspaper. So live or go to a in school in a small town, have something crazy happen to you, and then email the story to the newspaper. So I search for local newspapers um, and then find the editor's email, send a short email describing the story, explain how your story is expiring, include a picture or two of your story. In the email, include your contact information. Let them know that if they have any questions, they can ask you. 
if you don't hear back in a week, in about a week, send a short follow-up question or email. If they like the story, then they will probably ask for an interview. Is that it? Okay. Thanks, Mariah. Yeah, no problem. Yay. Um, again, that's just so valuable for the community. I know we, we actually, that's a question we get a lot too, is how do I get any local press? I've seen other rare artists um, submitted to the newspaper or maybe got their local news. And didn't you, I think you and your mom tried to also get in the local news, right? Yeah. Didn't work. <laughs> that's okay. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yet. I love it perseverance. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that, that also, you know, all of us in the rare disease community certainly know about challenges and roller coasters of events and you just keep trying. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. I think we're going to open it up now for Q and A. It sounds like we do have some time for it. So let's see if Brenda can join us. Hello. Hi Brenda. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Yes, we have a couple of questions. Actually, for Mariah, mm -hmm. um, somebody wants to know, what are you working on now? Ooh, um, well, I just finished um, a moon painting, and I'm working on school right now. That's great. Um, OK, I guess this is for you, Lindsay. Um, what is meant by disease affiliation? And is it preferred that we also describe our disorders in the artist's statement? Uh, yes. So uh, rare disease affiliation is just the disease you or your loved one has, or your friend, or if you're a caregiver. I mean, really, we're inviting anybody who's connected to rare. If you're not sure if, you if what you have is rare, uh, you can shoot me an email or you can go to NIH and look at their guard specification. Um, in general, a rare disease is anything that's under 200,000 in the US. Um, so that's how it's classified. Um, I, do I know all of the rare diseases offhand? No, I do not. I will sometimes just Google them myself. Um, so it's totally a valid question. Um, the contest is just for people in the rare disease bubble um, in our community um, because we are trying to um, celebrate our community. Uh, but if you're not sure, you can just shoot me an email. Okay. Great question. Mm, as someone who has been in the arts for years, the release form scares me. If I don't sign it, can I still enter? Um, you, you can, um, but if you are an awardee, we cannot proceed with giving you any sort of the award without the digital release form sign. So I know sometimes the, the digital release form is, is intimidating and scary and it's like legalese and you're not sure. So I'm just gonna throw out, I'm just gonna clarify what exactly it is you're signing. You're not signing away your art. It's all it's doing is it allowing every life to be able to reproduce your images. So in order for us to even make those posters to display and to showcase on Capitol Hill or at any other patient conferences or industry events, we have to have our copy. We have to have that protection. So that's really all it is. I know it can be scary as an artist, but I promise you it's with best intentions. It's not to try to steal your art by any means. Um, it also allows our marketing team to create pr and promote the, the program with some of those images. So for example, if you go to our Facebook page and you see the banner and that's a collection of past awardee images, um, all of those people sign the digital release form, which allows us to do that. Um, I will also add that um, if someone, if we get a, a, like a cold call inquiry about a specific art piece, um, no, we do not sell that. I then directly ask the artist, are you interested in being in contact with this person? They are interested in your art for whatever reason. Maybe it's to buy it, maybe it's to talk about art, maybe it's to get it featured in something, I don't know. Um, they, if that happens, I always go directly to the artist first. So I, I hope that helps and gives some reassurance. Um, I will also add, if you're not comfortable with any of this, 
don't enter to the contest. <laughs> it's completely volunteer, you know, no, no, no pressure. <laughs> um, another question for Mariah. What was it like speaking in front of a big audience? Were you nervous? I was, <laughs> um, but I, I'm glad I did that. I really like that. I, I like speaking in front of people. Yeah. I, I heard it was really well. I didn't, I unfortunately was um, not able to make it this year, um, but I heard you did wonderful, Maria. Thank you. <laughs> Do you, does anyone remember how big the crowd was? Oh, um, 200 people, okay. 250 maybe. <laughs> well, that, big crowd. that speaks volumes. I get nervous talking in front of that many people, so. Way to go, Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, someone asked, is there a rule on how recently the art piece was made? Um, no. Nope. It can be, I think we have people submit all the time from past artwork, you know. Um, we also have people submit on behalf of someone who has already left us. Um, you can do that too. By all means, we love to honor uh, people who have already passed. Um, so you can do that. Um, I would say just when you're submitting, enter it in uh, the age of the artist. Mm -hmm. I'll leave that up to you, whether it's at the time that they did, you know, use your best judgment. Is it at the time when they created that? Maybe if they are no longer with us, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's the time that they created it. And if they're still with us, um, just do the age of the artist. Another question, is this open to Canadians? Yep, absolutely open to our international guests. Um, once again, you are eligible for the cash prize of the award if you are awarded in the contest. However, when it comes to the uh, part of the award that's the travel stipend offering, we are only able to provide that if you have a US residential address. So keep that in mind going in. Okay. Um, another question, are the votes primarily from our own self-promotion or are there other inter others internally who add to the votes as well? Um, no one, no one internally. I mean, yeah, it's not like I go in and put on my favorites. Like, no, absolutely not. That would be cheating. <laughs> um, the best way for you to gain votes is to share that link that I showed you in the live demo and post it blast it, blast it everywhere. Especially right now during COVID times, like people are at home. I bet you anything, if you send that link to your grandma, she's going to be clicking that vote button every 10 days as much as you possibly can to help you win. Um, you can totally do that. And um, also we find that, um, you know, when we talk about rare disease affiliation and who you identify in your community, um, providing that link, to organizations, they love that. They love having someone, a representative from their community uh, receive such a prestigious award. And I will add, it is pretty prestigious. I mean, last year we had over 400 entries and we have like 11 slots to win. So it's a big deal. Um, say that. <laughs> someone wants to know what is Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill? Absolutely. So if you, the short answer is, if you want to find out more, please visit rareadvocates.org. Maybe we can post that link in the chat too. So people, thanks Brenda, can go directly to it. So it's a week long of events for the rare disease community. Um, uh, every year around rare disease week, which is at the, or sorry, rare disease day, which is February 28th. RDLA, one of the programs of the Every Life Foundation, brings all the rare disease advocates from around the U.S. to Washington, D.C. to lobby for rare disease legislation. So we always look for legislation that is going to help benefit the community, bring more treatments um, to the community at a faster rate. That's the kind of legislation that Every Life looks for. Um, you are also able to advocate for your own legislation that you find. Maybe someone from or your rare disease community has a, a, their own bill you're more than welcome to advocate for that. Um, we offer a training day that helps you prepare for those Hill meetings. It's called the Legislative Conference. It's a full day, packed 
full of information. I'm not going to lie, these days are long. Um, we really try to prepare you as best we possibly can so you get to walk into those Hill meetings the next day feeling confident, feeling prepared feeling ready to fight for your rights and tell your congressmen and women what it is that you need them to do. Um, what other events? So, oh, we have a, a documentary uh, film that week. That's usually at the start. We have a caucus briefing. Um, we have a young adults meetup um, under YARS, the YAR hosts that. We have the rare artist reception. And we also always coordinate with NIH for their rare disease day so that we're not overlapping events. So um, packed full week, we do offer travel stipends. Um, if you are not an awardee, you are more than welcome to apply for a travel stipend. I think we are up to three per state now. Um, anyway, RDLA is constantly talking about rare disease week. And if you have any questions about rare disease, we can generally, you can also email me. And we have one last question. Can I showcase rare art for my event? Oh, yes. I love this question. Oh my goodness, I forgot. So um, in addition to uh, us displaying at the rare artist reception, we also do showcases throughout the rest of the year at various patient conferences um, and in industry events. Sometimes our wonderful sponsors will ask us to showcase. Sometimes they will even ask for a specific artist to come and showcase their art and speak to the company. We love that. Um, this contest, this program is all about spreading awareness. So if you are interested in having some of this wonderful rare art at one of your events, again, elkundiff at everylifefoundation.org, please let's get in touch. I'd love to talk to you about how to share this wonderful art and bring awareness to rare diseases. Is that it? Yes. It's a wrap. That went by really fast. Oh my goodness. Mariah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was such a no. pleasure having you here today. And Brenda, thank you so much for filtering some of those questions. Um, I'll add Brenda's on our marketing team at Every Life. So she's a wonderful coworker, and I'm so glad that she was able to join us here as well. Okay. Um, that's a wrap, folks. Thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful spending this last hour talking about art with you. Stay safe.